Who's ready for the annual Advanced Knife Bro Channel's Trimming of the Tree mixtape? This year features special guests, jugs, bamboo, marbles, tops, essie. So while we'll get to the Christmas tree dismemberment in a half hour or so, let's read a few inspirational quotes from famous people about bamboo from terrible website BrainyQuotes.com, a major source for shitty PowerPoints everywhere. As you know, I left my bamboo in Virginia, and I really kind of miss it, probably more than a lot of people I met. Is there is there a name for that sort of condition? So the quotes. First, ooh, here's a nice one from Bruce Lee. Brainy Quotes totally swears that he said, Notice the stiffest tree is most easily cracked, while the bamboo or willow survives by bending with the wind, however fails when confronted by a simpleton with a machete. Ooh, and here's one attributed to uh, Marlon Brando. Hmm. With women, I've got a long bamboo pole with a leather loop on the end. I slip the loop around their necks so they can't get away or come too close so they catch in snakes. Venomous ones that bite me as I eat them. And that is why I talk like this. That Marlon Brando quote aged as well as Marlon Brando. Hey, rest in peace, creep. So uh, in this review, we'll compare three machetes. The marbles cost me 20, the SC about 60, and the tops just under 100. And that, folks, is how I spend my money. So let's compare some dimensions. No blue lines, like the overall length and weight. I'm doing slow-mo. We can't have everything. How about uh, weight with sheaths? Ooh, lots of pockets. Lots of tactical pockets. I've removed the sharpening stone from the marble's sheathed weight, just in case you like to roam into the wilderness unprepared, except for knowledge gleaned from YouTube videos. Blade size and chopping edge. This here's my Altoids tin filled with char cloth. Around here somewhere is my other Altoids tin filled with fire steels. Handle size and grip area. To keep them straight, the peppermint is the char cloth, and the cinnamon tin has the ferro rods. Spine thickness and handle thickness. Uncle Tactical's Bushcraft Knife Adventure said it'd be best to separate your survival gear by different flavors of Altoids, and the chemtrails are slowly shrinking our reproductive organs. Tallnesses. I'm still trying to locate a discontinued crammed a menth tin for my credit card size folding tactical tomahawk. And I'll be set. Okay, so three machetes here. So let's take a look at the blades. First, the marbles, model MA12718W, if you want to look it up, which I bought from Smoky Mountain Knife Works, who unfortunately did not sponsor this video. Marbles makes a few machetes in this size, which would be referred to as the Latin style 18 incher, like the title for that old VHS tape you still watch. Made from 1075 carbon steel with a smooth, sort of glossy orange coating to help resist corrosion on the blade. Orange, of course, is the most corrosion resistant of all the colors. Green would be the most resistant to the undead, you know, neon green, and then red to assassins and dragons, I think. The marbles, unlike cheap cold steel machetes I've dabbled in, there's some tapering from the spine to the edge and the handle to the tip, keeping it relatively light. You know this is distal tapering. Distal? Distal. There's quite a bit of flex to the blade too, just like uh, the Essie here. The Essie is a rebranded Imakasa machete with handles by Essie. Imakasa makes condor, tool, and knife. And like a lot of their machetes, it's made from 1075 carbon steel, like the marbles. Sorry, marbles in my mouth. The coating is a smooth anti-rust finish. It's a touch heavier than the marbles, with a little bit longer of a cutting edge despite being overall shorter. If you need someone to interpret the measurement section, and finally, the Topps 230 machete. I don't know what .230 means other than it's a, you know, sounds like your blood alcohol level about the time you decided buying three similar sized machetes was a good idea. Now its blade is made from 1095 carbon steel, which in addition to being a bigger, more tactical number, has slightly more carbon than the 1075 in the marbles and the SE. This in theory gives it a little better edge retention in anecdotal evidence on message boards. 1095 would be a little harder to sharpen, which is why I throw all of mine out and buy new ones. The coating is a matte textured black that seemed to uh, hold up well to abuse. The tops is made from about a millimeter thicker piece of steel than the other two, so it's less flexible overall and heavier. There's some taper in there too, so it's not just a sharpened piece of steel. All three were usably sharp out of the box, with the tops and Essie being only a hair sharper than the marbles. All three more than capable of taking a finger clean off 
while you swing them around in your backyard because you've never developed proper social skills. The handle, why not? First the marbles, it's tanged all the way through the handle and wrapped with wire. While you may have never said, you know what would make this handle comfortable? Wrapping it with some steel wire. That's why you don't make machetes. Turns out it actually isn't that bad. It gave an excellent grip in the snow and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the wood underneath the wire and on the butt seems a little splintery, so be careful. With the thickest handle of the three, it fit my hand well, and it got that lanyard hole. How about the Essie? I knew the Essie was discontinued, and bought it primarily because I knew it had the possibility of being a collector's item after I'm dead, so my children could flip it on eBay in 70 years for about the price I paid because of my massive credit card debt due partially to buying all these stupid-ass machetes. Also, the handle shape and material used was another consideration when purchasing, although the handle is not as easily removable like most Essies, because those are no screws. The rivets. The handle is a smooth micarta and also fit my hand well. It's my favorite shaped handle of the three, but in my heart, I wish the micarta was a little more fabric-y feeling. It has a lanyard loop and the handle is made in the USA by Essie, even though, of course, it's a Mikasa. And now the tops, I'm a little torn. While the micarta for the handle is the right texture, a metaphorical butterfly in a polypropylene world, and it's removable with hex screws, it's kind of a weird shape. Sound familiar? It's not that it's uncomfortable, but it's a thin handle and the finger groove is kind of shallow. I would have preferred a more pronounced front finger guard, thicker scales, and maybe a Punisher skull type engraving somewhere to let everyone know you aren't fucking around. Of course, unless that's some sort of trademark violation, wouldn't want to get into IP laws. The sheaths. First, if you've ever bitched about your machete not coming with a goddamn whistle, Drop everything and buy the tops. Just go right now. Go. Go. You can scare away bears. Attract mates. Attract bears to mate with. And let everyone know who the king of this fucking jungle is. Conversely, if you are looking for a perfect sheath, well, keep wishing with one foot while stepping in bear shit with the other. The tops is two pockets with slightly overkill tactical buckles. What do you mean, slightly? It's a right-handed sheath and not a drop sheath. Retention isn't great. And it might could do with a handle loop to secure the blade. Up top is... You swing through the jungle. I would have preferred a drop sheath with better retention versus the buckle shit, but no one asked me. It's sturdy and thick though. The marbles. It comes with a sharpening stone and a few extra pockets so you can put your weed in there. They are held by Velcro fasteners and it's actually a drop sheath with a cheap feeling loop. The machete retention here is the best among the three. Just shove it way the hell down in it. Busy, but it's functional. Although it's made for righties, just like the tops, or just cross drawn, stop whining. Now the SE sheath also isn't great. It's ambidextrous though, but retention is the worst among the three. Sort of rattles around. All three are nylon or polyester, or cordura, or some other petroleum-based product that takes 300 years to break down in a landfill. I would have preferred dyed dead cow. That should only take 250 years to break down after I'm dead and gone. Comparisons, I have quite a few machetes, a phrase more of self-examination than a brag. But let's compare just a few because most were packed away at the time because of moving. First, the marbles. Dare I say the cheapest one is the most well-rounded. Handles okay. Micarta would be better, but there ain't no Micarta handles in the $20 machete range. You could steal them if you're on a budget, I guess. Steal maybe the whole machete. It's light. Good for greener, thinner bushwhacking. Also, I like the blade shape. Now the tops. Fit and finish and materials on the tops are the tops. But flashy over functional, I prefer a pointier tip on a machete too but it's stout and can handle chopping with less blade flex while whacking. It's a good effort and I might grow to love it in the future. But why spend under $50 on a good machete when this $100 one has a tactical lifestyle marketing campaign? Now the Essie, or Imakasa. Some people might ask why I didn't just get a Condor Latin machete. I don't know, good question. I like the handle. That's mostly it really, as you'll see at the end of the video. A lot left to be desired on the heat treat or the lack of one. Also, would have liked a removable handle for cleaning and rust inspection, but at least I have something to bitch about, so that's a positive. Now the Ontario Military 18-inch. I reviewed this one last year, was it? Actually, is it two years ago now? I don't remember, who cares? This one is well-built. A better budget alternative than maybe the SE or the Tops. The handle is kind of cheap and slick, but it works. It chops and holds up well to abuse. Now if you're looking for something a bit more suited for Woodier chopping, then well, the Condor Golock, which I review in an upcoming video, excels. Seen here, nice big lumpy back end like we all like, so it stays in the hand well. 
Thick blade stock and kind of heavy. If you often battle thicker, woodier cellulose based foes, then you know, say hack it thin branches, this works better as your kind of not socially acceptable side piece. All right, let's wrap it up and do some uh, field testing. Out of the three, the easiest to recommend is the marbles. I'm well aware of Tramontinas, regular old Imacasas, Martindales, and whatever machete you're gonna suggest in the comments. The Tops is a nice try, but a little too odd to fall in love with at $100. And the Essie, well, spoiler alert, some bad edge rolling. I'm gonna show it here now and get to the chopping after, so it's gonna be out of order, but I think you get the idea. I own quite a few choppers and machetes and have never seen anything quite like this in all of my years of whacking. Guess this is, uh, you know, skip the heat treat. I don't think it's overall reflective of Imikasa or Condor, or even least of all Essie. You know, sometimes you just have shit luck. Anyway, if you like this sort of review, subscribe, comment, like, follow me on the Instagrams, maybe think of donating to my Patreon. You can follow me on Twitter too, but I basically just like Onion articles all the time. Patreon helps me afford the $200 worth of machetes seen here to make a dumbass video with slow motion and music. So, hey, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.